Hi everyone, today I will teach you how to build MRP table using POQ method to determine the order lot size. So what is POQ? POQ stands for periodic order quantity. And for periodic order quantity, the periodic time will be fixed. The order quantity can be different, but the periodic time will not change. So let's see what type of information we have here. We have the gross requirement. Gross requirement is the demand of the customers. We have in week one, the demand is 150 tables. In week four, the demand is 120 tables. We have to deliver 150 tables to the customer in week six and 120 tables in with seven. The beginning inventory is 37 tables. So I will put here the current inventory is 37. Lead time is two weeks. What does it mean? It means if I order in week one, two weeks later, I will receive my products. So it's like the waiting time from you make the order until the products arrive to you. Safety stock is equal to zero. It means we do not keep any safety stock. Periodic time is three weeks. We will receive in week one 130 tables. So here I put it in schedule receipt. What is schedule receipt? Schedule receipt is an order that is about to arrive at a specific date. So here in week one, we will receive uh, 230 tables. Our schedule receipt in week one is 230 tables. So we already fulfill all the information in this table. So now we have to determine uh, when should we order and how much, how many products should we order. So first, we will plan to receive the new products when the on-hand products, like what we have in our hands, are not satisfy the demand. Let's see in week one. So in week one, we have the beginning inventory is 37. And we will receive 230. So the total products we have is 267 tables. And the demand is only 150. So we have more than enough. So we do not have to receive any new products. So the plan received in week one is equal to zero. So how can we calculate the inventory, on hand inventory? It will equal to what we have on our hand minus what we have to deliver. So it will equal to the on hand inventory in last period plus the schedule receipt plus the plan receipt. That's C6 and minus what we have to deliver. That is the demand. So we have the on-hand inventory in week 1 is 117. In week 2, we do not have any demand, we do not have any schedule receipt, so the inventory is still the same. So it's the same for week 3. In week 3, we do not need to do anything. We do not have any demand, we do not have any schedule receipt. So the on-hand inventory is still the same, 117. In week 4, we have 117 in inventory, but the demand is 120. So we like cut products, so we need to make the receipt plan in week 4. So how much, how many should we receive? Because the periodic time here is three weeks, so we need to take the sum of week four plus week five plus week six. Okay? 
and minus the scatter receipt and minus the on hand inventory. So we have the plan received in week 4 is 153. And the same we can calculate the inventory here is equal to the inventory in week 3 plus the plan received minus the demand. So we have this 150. In week 5, we do not do anything, no demand, no schedule receipt, so the inventory will be the same, 150 tables. Here we have 150 table, and the demand in week 6 is also 150 tables, so we also don't need to receive anything. And the inventory now become zero. Since we do not have anything in inventory, but the demand in week 7 is 120 tables, so we need to receive something in week 7. And it will be the sum of week 7, week 8, and week 9. So here we do not have any information for week 9, so we just sum of week 7 and week 8. And we minus the schedule receipt minus the inventory. So we have what we plan to receive is 120, and the demand is 120, so the inventory is equal to 0 here. Okay, the lead time is two weeks, so we have to order two weeks in advance. So to receive 150 tables in week four, we need to make the order two weeks in advance, that is in week two. And the same to receive the table in week seven, we have to make order in week five. In week 1, we will receive 230 tables for the schedule receipt and deliver 150 tables to the customer. In week 2, we will make an order of 153 tables. In week 3, do we need to do anything? No, nope, right? But in week 4, we will receive 150 tables and deliver 120 tables to the customer. In week 5, we will make an order of 120 tables in week 6 we will deliver 150 tables to the customer in week 7 we will receive 120 tables and deliver 120 tables to the customer. So we already finished MRP when we use POQ method. So I just taught you how to uh, fulfill the MRP table, how to view MRP table manually so that you have the uh, basic idea how to calculate, how to fulfill 
the app of the table using POQ. In the next video, I will uh, tell you how to fulfill MRP table using the Excel formula.